Appreciate that a little bit more in the next week or yeah, so. Yeah, it's good. All righty. We're going to uh, thanks for joining us all this afternoon here. We're going to sign uh, three uh, separate pieces of legislation. Uh, the first one we're going to do uh, relates uh, um, some of these. Well, each of these are uh, time specific. We're going to do a whole series of other pieces of legislation uh, next week, many of which were bills that passed as part of the special session on jobs. Today, the first one comes off the call of the special session. Uh, the latter two are bills that were passed as part of the normally scheduled uh, fall legislative session. Again, they're t all, each of them are time uh, specific. The first one, uh, Senate Bill 203, uh, ties into um, how uh, income taxes are treated uh, and in terms of benefits that are bestowed. And it really what it is is about um, having the state of Wisconsin be in line with where the federal government is uh, in terms of this provision. This is one of those things where not only is it tax savings to those individuals who receives, receive that benefit, uh, but it's really about making sure that the state law parallels the federal law, uh, which for both individuals and for businesses is incredibly important. It's something we heard not only in this area, but obviously other areas uh, where we, uh, just for, particularly for small businesses, to make sure that as they're uh, doing bookkeeping, keeping track of things, having to have different sets of books, different requirements, different stipulations, and so something that's very similar to where Wisconsin law is currently is incredibly important. So I, I want to thank all the folks who are here. I want to particularly thank, I know um, our assembly author is not here, but Senator uh, Van Wangard is here uh, from the Racine area, who is the Senate author. And uh, I'm going to be signing that, and then we'll follow up. I'll, I'll talk about each of the other bills separately and then take uh, some questions overall at the end. But I, I will stress, just because there's occasionally some confusion as I've been uh, talking about the special session, there were a series of bills that were brought up in the special session. We called it uh, to focus in on jobs, on things that would help businesses, um, not necessarily with the set amount of jobs, because uh, hopefully, as people know, at least I know, I know, Senator, you and others know, uh, government doesn't create jobs. People create jobs. Uh, and so for those who look to the government to create the jobs, that just doesn't happen and hasn't happened. In fact, we've seen the failure of that to happen at the national level. Instead, what we're trying to do is create a better business environment so that it's easier for private sector employers to create jobs. Some of those things that I'm going to be signing next week uh, deal with uh, lowering the cost of frivolous lawsuits and litigation costs. Some of them have to do with uh, other issues in terms of regulations and transportation costs and things like that. Uh, but in the end, it's about making it easier for job creators. Now, this is one of those bills. Um, it's not the be-all, end-all, but it's one of them uh, adding together, collectively adding a number of things that make it easier. And it's also about sending a clear message to employers in the state in all that we do, whether it be through the statutes, uh, whether it be through the administration of those statutes in, in my administration, we're trying to make government more customer friendly to employers, particularly small businesses, you know, so that it's easier. They can spend their time and their resources investing in capital, investing in things that put more people to work here in the state of Wisconsin. Um, so with that, uh, we're going to sign the first measure into law, and then I'll come up and talk as the next group assembles uh, for the next signing.
Okay, the, uh, the folks come up. The next bill is uh, Senate Bill 75, um, and this is uh, deals with uh, earn a buck. And I want to thank uh, Senator Terry Moulton, who is the lead sponsor in the state Senate, and uh, Representative Tom Tiffany, the lead author in the state assembly, as uh, well as uh, Senator Neil Kedzie, who is the chair of the Senate committee this went through and has been a great champion on conservation, sportsmen and sportswomen issues and Representative Jeff Marcel, uh, who is the equivalent uh, chair in the state assembly and all the others who support it, as well as all the other groups and organizations. Uh, this and the next one both deal with uh, conservation issues and, and in particular hunting. Um, and uh, timing wise, we wanted to make sure with the time needed to put this into effect uh, that it was crystal clear uh, it's something our DNR has taken into account, but this makes it crystal clear that uh, earn a buck uh, is uh, no longer uh, the policy and will not be the policy in the future. We're obviously spending a lot of time. In fact, I'm going to be sitting down in the coming weeks with our dear trustee and, and uh, uh, conservation advocates, sporting advocates from across the state and talking about the process of examining a whole assortment of issues. Uh, but earn a buck's obviously something we've heard a lot about in the past. It's something I know as a hunter myself have dealt with the frustration uh, with. And so, so that this will be fully enacted uh, before the start of the deer gun season in a few weeks. Uh, we're signing this today. Uh, again, so this is clear, as I mentioned before. Uh, this is coming out of the, the normal legislative session, not the special session. Special session was focused on jobs uh, solely on that issue. You had parallel issues coming up in the fall session. And this was one of those appropriately so on a timely basis to be done to send a clear message to those men and women uh, and young people across the state that are going out to hunt this year uh, that uh, earn a buck is not uh, the, the policy of the state of Wisconsin. So with that, we're going to sign that. And I assume it's going to be most of the same group staying up here for this, but uh, for any others who are going to join on uh, Senate Bill uh, 228, uh, which again, in this case, was uh, authored by the same Senator Terry Moulton and in the Assembly, uh, Scott Crew uh, from Wisconsin Rapids was the leader on this. Again, it went through both uh, Neil and Jeff's committee in the Senate and the Assembly. I appreciate their leadership here. Uh, this is one of those things where it's, it's a relatively uh, technical but important change. It makes it easier for those uh, hunting uh, in terms of, and I know this myself in the past, uh, getting it out even off of just moving from one end of property to another, uh, making sure it's easier in terms of transporting a firearm to that point. Uh, and in addition, looking at folks who might be in a position where they're Hunting, uh, in some cases, somebody might even have a blind off the back of a pickup truck as long as it's stable and it's not moving, uh, making it easier to account for people in situations like that. So uh, this is a technical change, but an important one that will make it easier uh, for folks hunting. Uh, a lot of the confusion in that, uh, this makes it clear. Uh, that, uh, and I've had this myself in the past where you go to move from one end of a property to another and you've got a firearm. Um, in this case, you don't have to fully encase it and do everything else. If you're going to move it to the other end, you can still have it in the truck or vehicle you might have, uh, take it to the other end. Again, like I say, it's fairly technical because it deals with a small group of folks who are hunting, but uh, it's an important issue to make it easier to hunt. And that's important beyond just those of us who hunt. It's important to state because you look at the fall, 
uh, particularly many rural parts of the state of Wisconsin. Um, tourism is our third biggest industry and one of the big elements that drives tourism visits uh, into many of our small communities in particular across the state is those individuals coming in to hunt. The easier we can make it, the more effective and attractive we can make it. It's why in the past many of the same folks up here have helped us with making it easier to attract young people uh, and youthful hunts out there as well. This is just one more step towards making it easier and conven convenient to hunt in the state of Wisconsin. This again comes off of not the special session, but off the regular scheduled session. that we'll give everybody a second to get settled and then uh, and then I know you guys probably got some questions so Session bills have passed. Is that enough to call the special session a success? Well, I think it's a success anytime we move forward and make it easier for businesses, particularly small businesses, uh, to have the certainty and stability they need to, to add jobs in the state of Wisconsin. So, without a doubt, it's a success. Uh, I'm going to keep working on some of those other items as well as other bills uh, that were not on the call for the special session, like um, the possibility of, of uh, streamlining the, the mining process in the state, like looking at venture capital. I still think those things, even though they weren't on the special call, as well as a couple of the other bills, are worth exploring. And if there are other issues out there, you know, for us, it's not just about a specific time frame. My view, my pledge to the people of the state is every day, Every week, every month I'm in office, my number one priority is going to be jobs and how do we help make it easier for the private sector to create jobs. And so while not every one of those bills was passed, uh, we got a good chunk of them passed. I think that's a good sign for businesses in the state looking for stability, for certainty, uh, for a partner in state government. And we're going to work on some of the other bills that were not passed as well as some other ideas with the legislature in the coming months ahead. Most of the bills related to investment, small business investment, angels. I mean, yeah. most of those got stuck in the process. I mean, uh, arguably, do you feel like those may have been more important to job creation? Well, it's one of those where I think part of the challenge has been, and, and uh, you've had members in, in the legislature, both the Republican and the Democrat side, raise some concerns in terms of where we're at right now financially and whether or not uh, those tax credits and incentives and other things could be acted on right now. Uh, we're going to come back and look and see if there's a way of retooling some of those and see if there's another way of, of, uh, of working together on that. Um, and there's some other ideas that have been brought up since we called the special session in September. We're going to look at that as well. But to us, as long as we're moving forward, as long as there's progress in none of these areas, uh, part of it's the, the actual uh, statutory change, but much of it, I, I sat in this room earlier today with a group of mid-sized manufacturing companies talking about things we could do, and there's even more things on the horizon we can do uh, working with them and working with others on helping them access skilled workers, helping open the door to other opportunities that we still need to do more work on. So. Uh, just one or two special sessions for us is not enough. We need to be working on it all the time. And um, whether it's later in December or after the start of the year, uh, we're going to put even more packages on the table uh, because, again, we're nationally, we're behind the curve. Uh, the national unemployment rate's much higher than the state. The states went down uh, this month compared, or this past month compared to the month before, but it's still too high. 
and we've got to do more to pull ahead of where the national economy is right now. And again, whether it's in December or it's after the start of the year, in the coming months, we're going to work together uh, with not just both parties, but with people in the private sector to try and find more ways to help create more jobs in Wisconsin. Does that mean you're going to call a third special session on jobs? I, I don't know about that. I mean, for us, to me, calling a, a session really is dependent on having a number of bills that we think can get passed. And so I still think there's a lot of work to be done, particularly on some of those big issues that we didn't include in the call. Venture capital, I put out a plan, I think a very reasonable compromise that invokes some of the ideas we had from each of the four caucuses that we think could move forward, could help new startups and expanding small businesses. Certainly I think it's important for us to move forward on mining. Um, when you've got seven to 800 potential jobs in the Northwest, but yet overall potentially thousands of jobs that could benefit uh, from throughout the state one way or another. I think that's something we need to look at as well. Uh, I'm committed to working with uh, lawmakers as well as people outside of government who are interested in those bills and others like them moving forward. But until we have something we think can pass, uh, it's probably premature to talk about future special sessions. Did Democrats say, you know, you spent a lot of time in this session, regular session, in the job session, talking about you know, abortion rights and gun rights and that kind of thing, when are you going to get your jobs? Would this possible next session, would you include more Democratic jobs bills? Well, let's back up for one second. I've only talked about jobs. Uh, the other measures were measures the legislature, uh, rightfully so, they, they have a regularly scheduled fall session. They can bring up any and everything on there. But our special session, despite some of the intentional confusion by some of the cynics out there, has only been on bills related to jobs, and we'll continue to focus on that. Again, the legislature's uh, uh, elected to handle any assortment of issues. They haven't lost sight throughout all this on the jobs agenda while being able to take up other bills that are important uh, uh, to other uh, individuals across the state of Wisconsin. Uh, but from our standpoint, we've seen, and when I originally called this, I was willing to include bills authored by both Democrats and Republicans alike. If it's a good bill that's going to make it easier for the people of the state to create jobs, uh, we're certainly willing to work together uh, on that, and not just on specific bills, but venture capital is a good example where we went to great lengths to work with Republicans and Democrats in both the Assembly and the Senate, and the compromise we put on the table really reflects ideas from both Democrats and Republicans as well. So we're going to continue to push on that. Governor, you've got a lot of other bills in other areas. Mm -hmm. You've got the Castle Doctrine. You've got an elected comptroller from Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. There's a number of other bills. You want to talk about uh, whether you expect to sign those pieces of legislation? Well, I'll be reviewing a lot of them just came over in the last day or two. Obviously, uh, we always like to make, even though if the concept is a good one, we like to make sure we understand all the details if there are amendments offered and things of that nature. But, I mean, in general, uh, you look at Castle Doctrine, much like concealed carry. We're, one of, we're not the first state to do that. Many other states have had that. Uh, to me, I, over the years, one of the things I've always cringed with is when uh, I hear a story of someone where someone, uh, a criminal comes onto someone's property um, and someone seeks to defend themselves, their family, uh, their property, and in the end somehow faces some sort of uh, legal challenge uh, because they tried to protect their family. Uh, I think it's uh, f f assuming the bill uh, does everything that it originally was set out to do. Uh, that to me makes sense just like concealed carry did. We're not the first state in concealed carry's case. We're the 49th state. It's worked well in every other state that's had it. It hasn't had problems. The problems are ultimately the people who are carrying illegally, uh, and that'll continue to be the case no matter what the hysteria out there. Uh, the reality is that uh, the problem is not with people who are illegally carrying, it's with others. So in, in each of those cases, I think that just follows a pattern that has worked successfully in other states. Um, and on the other one, JC, oh, on the comptroller, uh, again, I'd have to look at the parameters, but that's a bill that passed with bipartisan support. Um, that's something that the county executive, uh, Chris Abley, who took the spot I once held, uh, endorsed, and many civic and community leaders have su uh, supported as another check and balance for the taxpayers of that county. And uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. I'll have to take a closer look at it, but just on the surface, it makes sense. And I've supported in the past, assuming it matches what I've supported in the past, uh, I'd be inclined to sign that too. Okay, time for maybe one or Governor, the, sure. the Venture Capital Working Group, members of that group, have said that they actually felt they were getting more done uh, in those meetings and, and were able to hammer up um, issues that they weren't able to do in the public eye and express that they would like that to go further into other areas before the group is postponed. Is there a possibility that those members 
may come back at a later time to broaden their range and sure. what they're initially doing? Absolutely, and we're willing to work with them. We just said after uh, multiple weeks of meetings and something that wasn't a permanent task for us, but really a working group to try and get something together this fall, we thought to get the discussions moving, um, you really had <clears throat> not one or two, but really three or four different directions where they were headed. Uh, we tried to piece together a compromise, but we thought, uh, took some ideas from any number of people who were involved in that group, said this is a reasonable compromise to take a step forward. We thought it's something that has a realistic way of uh, moving forward in the legislature. If they want to adjust or amend that uh, through uh, discussions amongst legislators, uh, that's certainly fine, but we think we put a very reasonable compromise on the table uh, at a point where uh, they've had a lot of meetings but haven't had a lot of progress and we thought it was time to jump start things and we thought putting that compromise on the table was a good start. And I'll, do, I'll do that one last one there, sure. So um, you said government doesn't create jobs, mm -hmm. then why did you pledge to create 250,000 jobs by I didn't, if you look at what I said, I said I'm gonna create an atmosphere for which the private sector can create 250,000 jobs. That's the big mistake a lot of people in politics make, uh, in both political parties sometimes, they pledge they're gonna create jobs, uh, government doesn't create jobs, people do. And so what I've done is work every day to help create an environment. It's precisely what happened a generation ago. We made the pledge, some people said, you know, where'd that come from out of thin air? I look back to when Tommy Thompson was first running for governor in 1985, very similar circumstances coming off of a national recession, huge challenges in both the state and the country at the time. He aggressively came in as governor and put in place a series of policies that helped the people of the state by the time his first term was done in 1990, the people of the state had created 258,000 jobs. So even though it's a challenge, even though we continuously have to push to aggressively go further, uh, I believe if we make it easier for job creators to create jobs in this state, uh, that's exactly what we'll do. If we make it harder, uh, we're gonna see that they go in the opposite direction. But I have, I'm an optimist. Uh, I believe we can lead the nation just as we have before. And I believe there's a lot of people in both parties who want to see that done in the future, and I'm willing to work with them to get it done. Governor, Thanks very much for your time. In the case of Ohio, are they going to take up voter reserve, mm -hmm. take up a piece of legislation similar to the one that you passed here in March? Uh, you know, what are you what are you looking to see here? You know, and if, if that legislation is you know repealed by those voters, does that say anything about the legislation? No. Ohio and us are much different. We're Badger fans, they're Buckeye fans. Uh, there's a world of difference out there, and uh, my hope is, uh, as we did last year, we'll continue to be on top in the future with Buckeyes. Thanks.